Hello. Um, I will show you in this video how to extend pool party by your own custom schemas. Uh, pool party is a cost uh, oriented uh, Desaros manager, but it's possible to create virtually any kind of RDF schema with uh, pool party to extend your knowledge base, your knowledge graph by either um, well introduced schemas like a uh, friend of a friend or a shock or others which are frequently used on the semantic web or you could even create your own schemas and I will show you how that works. So for that purpose I've loaded the standard thesaurus for economics uh, into the pool party editor. You can see the hierarchy here. Um, actually it's only a, a small part of, of the uh, STW Desaurus, um, which uh, is about the geographical um, areas uh, like names, languages, and stuff like that. So, for instance, let's go to to Europe. Okay, let's go to, to Central Europe, and here, for instance, let's go to Austria. Okay. Um, now, I would like to um, see how could I express with pool party. Uh, and its underlying RDF structure um, that in Austria um, people speak German. So, for instance, I could, for instance, do a related here. I could introduce here German as a related, but it remains unclear how the relationship actually is between um, the country Austria and the language German. So, I would like to uh, set up a new schema for that purpose, and I will do that right now. I go to the advanced menu, um, go to the custom schema um, dialog, and here I can create a new schema. So, I, I call it, for instance, uh, Geo. Geo is my name. I would like to give that. Um, schema and here now I can uh, go on and introduce a new property uh, you can see here is already foe for instance uh, uh, a schema available and the one I've just introduced second step is I will pick out the type of property you can see there are a couple of uh, pretty obvious ones like uh, URI for instance uh, would be a property you choose if you want to connect a concept uh, to let's say another resource or to a home page to uh, something uh, HTTP um, to HTTP address for instance if you pick label for instance you probably would like to introduce a name a property which which contains a name or something like uh, let's say um, certain names for a certain concept and, and things like that or integer is also pretty obvious let's say you would like to express uh, the, the population of a country you probably would uh, pick integer but now I will go for uh, relationship type concept because I want to relate to concepts to each other in a specific way so um, I say okay con uh, country uh, speaks uh, language so that that's the, the name of the property you can see a UI is generated uh, automatically you could overwrite that and uh, use virtually any other URI to uh, to, to you uh, for that uh, certain property and the, the last um, thing you have to uh, put in here is is it a multiple a property which can have multiple uh, values or just uh, a single one. In that case, I would say multiple is uh, uh, the one we have to, to choose. There are a lot of countries uh, which uh, where more than just language is spoken. So same situation in Austria. Okay, speaks language. That's the one. And now I can do the inverse property also if I like. Um, for that reason, I will say, okay, uh, is uh, spoken in, for instance, and I say, yeah, that's the inverse of speaks language. Okay, save that. And now I've got those two properties. And as you can see, as soon as I uh, click again on Austria, I've got another tab here. So I've got this cost tab as usually. Um, 
the fourth tab where I have a property called home page and the geo tab. That's the two properties I've just introduced. And now I can start typing and say, okay, speaks language, uh, German, for instance. Okay, here I see, okay, there's a language called German. Save it. And if I click on German language, geo, I see it's spoken in Austria. So that's um, done automatically because we've just said before, okay, that's the inverse of. So that's the first property I wanted to introduce. And now I introduce another one. So I go back to the custom schema dialog. Uh, I say, okay, now I will put that property into an existing schema called geo. That's the one I just created before. And now I want to put an integer here, for instance. Um, and I say population. So that now I can uh, attach to each uh, concept if I want a, a population, which is uh, single. And I say save. Okay, now I can um, put, for instance, here 8 million people. Now that was not uh, the case because German is not the one where I want to put the population, it's the country. So Austria has got 8 million inhabitants. Okay, that's the second property I wanted to um, introduce. And that's um, a mechanism you can extend, of course, by virtually any other schema you, you, you want to make use of. If we take a short look on the triples tab, we can see here that's the, um, the um, property I just introduced. You can see here is the subject predicate object relationship and here is the population subject predicate. And in that case, there is uh, a, a number attached to this uh, property. Yeah, so um, that's about it. You have seen that uh, with pool party, it's possible not only to create uh, SCOS thesauri, but virtually any kind of RDF schema uh, based knowledge graph. And um, in another video, I will show you how to export uh, such knowledge graphs into a large triple stores like Virtuoso. And by doing so, you can do really interesting queries across uh, uh, different uh, knowledge graphs. You can do uh, interesting mashups. You can do a really um, link data-based uh, um, querying across uh, a lot of knowledge graphs you've created or you've imported from other sources like linked open data or your own relational databases and things like that. Yeah, that, that's about it. Um, thanks for your attention and see you soon. Bye-bye.